Now at five, a deep freeze settles in tonight. I'll have the latest on your next winter blast in your live Doppler 15 Fury forecast. Plus, do you know how to prevent frostbite? We have tips from the experts and a look at how to treat it. And how are the city of Fort Wayne and area businesses getting ready for the bitter cold? We have team coverage to get you ready. I'm Dirk Rowley. I'm Tara Brantley. First at five starts now. You're watching local coverage you can count on. This is Wayne 15 News, first at 5. So if somehow you've managed to miss this already, tomorrow is going to be dangerously cold. Temperatures will dip below freezing with even colder wind chills. Having a day with a below zero high is rare. It has happened only 10 times in our city's history. The last time this happened was 25 years ago, back in 1994. Tonight, we continue our team coverage of this winter blast. Wayne 15's Adam Solarzik talked with the city of Fort Wayne about what they're planning to deal with the cold. And Wayne 15's Kai Torque looked into how businesses will be impacted. But we start with Wayne 15's chief meteorologist, Nicholas Ferreri, for the latest on just how cold this winter blast will be. Nicholas? Okay, well, our temperatures are already starting to fall into the single digits in some areas, mainly to the north and west of Fort Wayne. The current temperature in the Summit City is 10 now, but it is 9 in Auburn, 5 in Kendallville, 6 in Columbia City, and 9 in Huntington and Bluffton. By the time we get into the overnight hours, well, that's when we'll see these air temperatures fall below zero. Wind chill values are already below zero in most locations. It feels like 11 below in Fort Wayne and Huntington, 14 below in LaGrange, feels like 3 below in Decatur, and 8 below in Van Wert. Now, as far as precipitation, those chances are relatively low. Mine are not very impactful. A few scattered snow showers will be out there tonight, but nothing more than a light coating of snow in the areas that see the snowflakes. There will be a scattering of clouds that will lead us into the day tomorrow, and it's a day that, although it will be quite cold, it will also be sunny around here. By midnight, we're down to one degree, but we get so much colder. I'm back to track all the changes in the 10 day in a few minutes. Nicholas, thank you. With conditions like this, we can't emphasize enough that one of the biggest concerns for you is the threat of frostbite. Experts say it can happen in as little as 10 minutes. Signs include cold skin and a prickling feeling, numbness and hard or waxy looking skin. Some ways to prevent getting frostbite include dressing in several layers of loose, warm clothing, wearing a hat or head band that fully covers your ears, wearing socks and sock liners that fit well, absorb moisture and provide insulation, and there's more. It's something that we see a lot is people, people tend to underestimate how cold it is outside and, and underdress. Dry clothing is a must. Uh, if you're out shoveling and your gloves are wet, take those off, get a new pair of gloves. If you do get frostbite or think you may have it, seek medical attention right away. You can also gently warm the area in warm water, not hot, or with wet heat until the skin appears red and warm. With the brutally cold temperatures on the way, the city is preparing to offer shelter to those who need it. A travel watch is being issued due to the sub-zero temperatures. Wayne 15's Adam Salarzik talked with the city and he joins us with what they had to say. Adam? Yes, Dirk and Tara, while road conditions are good in most areas, the extreme cold makes roadside emergencies dangerous and a threat to the safety of the public, which is why there is a countywide travel watch that was issued. The city is also asking people to avoid the harsh conditions if possible, and if you can't find a warm place, the city is providing shelter through the rescue mission. Also, they're delaying Wednesday trash and recycling service. Providing shelter to those in need is the top priority of the city. The rescue mission will serve as the lead warming shelter provider for the city. Anyone who is looking for shelter needs to start at the rescue mission. There they will determine the best place for you to wait out the cold, whether it be with them or one of their partner organizations providing assistance. As for trash, Red River will not be collecting garbage or recycling. Collections will be delayed one day for the rest of the week, meaning Wednesday collection will happen Thursday and so on. Finally, make sure to check on any neighbors in the community that may need assistance during the cold. I think it's just important for everyone uh, to use caution. Be careful outside. If you have friends and neighbors and family who need to be checked on, please do that. We want to make sure that we're as safe as possible in the city of Fort Wayne. If you don't have to be outside, please don't. Uh, that will allow our emergency uh, operations teams to do their jobs more effectively. So just everyone work together, uh, stay calm, and, and use caution, and uh, we're confident we'll be able to get through this uh, cold period. 
And of course, if you must go out, make sure you are bundled up in layers and limit how much skin is exposed to the elements. City parks, facilities, Allen County Superior and circuit courts, along with government offices, will be closed tomorrow. I also spoke with some residents about the cold. You can hear their reactions at 6. And for more on the city's preparations, you can find the story on Wayne.com. All right, Adam, thanks very much. A serviceman needed to be rescued from a Walgreens roof after he slipped on ice and broke his leg. Police were called to the State Road 1 location around noon today. The victim was trying to repair a heating unit on the roof when he fell. Since he broke his leg, he wasn't able to climb down. The Huntertown Fire Department brought in a ladder truck, stabilized the man in a basket, and brought him down from the roof. Many schools across the uh, area are closing due to the cold weather, including Purdue Fort Wayne. The university closed at 430 this afternoon. This will last through tomorrow and includes classes, events, activities all along with the entire campus. The University of St. Francis, Indiana Tech are closed as well. While many schools are uh, closing tomorrow, some businesses will try to be continuing as usual. For example, many of you will be ordering pizzas tomorrow and someone has to deliver them. Wayne 15's Kai Torque joins us now in the newsroom. Kai Torque, how are workers getting ready for the frigid temperatures? Well, many of them are trying their best not to think about it, but they will be wearing as many layers of clothing as possible. Tomorrow, Fort Wayne will have a high temperature of negative nine degrees. Um, that's cold. <laughs> City Link Public Transportation is already making plans for the chilly day. I think we're ready. We'll see how it goes. Um, if the driver's cars start and they can come in uh, and get here to drive the buses, um, the buses should be ready to go. Marketing manager Betsy Kochmar says they have a heated bus barn that their buses stay in overnight. Maintenance will be starting the buses earlier than usual in the morning. Their biggest concern is their customers. The way public transit works is that you have to be waiting outside for the bus to come by, right? We usually recommend that people stay, um, get to the bus stop a little bit early. Uh, we still recommend that, uh, so dress appropriately. Food delivery drivers will also be exposed to the frigid temperatures all day. Waiter on the way driver Michael Ringley hopes not to freeze. I'm a little concerned about my car uh, actually starting and being able to continue. I'm just going to wear a lot of layers and stay exposed as little as possible. He says there is a bright side. Uh, usually the worse the weather, the better the tips. Waiter on the way may actually have to close, but they're optimistic. Uh, we're hopeful uh, as long as the restaurants will, will uh, as long as too many restaurants don't close. And uh, there's not a like a emergency vehicles only emergency. I think we'll uh, be good to go. We also talked to UPS and they say their delivery drivers will be out on the roads. To find out all of the closings in our area, head to Wayne.com for the complete list. Live in the newsroom, Kai K, Wayne 15 News. Kai thank you. And remember, you can go to the Wayne Weather app for the most current weather information. And of course, Wayne.com will keep you up to date as we continue our coverage the rest of this week. We are your team to watch, of course. Join us on Nightcast at 11 and First News tomorrow morning starting at 5 a.m. for the very latest on what's happening outside. All right, we're still days away from the biggest game of the year, the Super Bowl, but the teams are doing all they can to prepare. Right, and we are continuing our Super Bowl 53 coverage from Atlanta. That is where we find Wayne 15's Anthony Calhoun. He joins us live at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Good evening, my friend. All right, we all know excitement is going through the roof, literally. How hey, tough? Dara. Is, hey there. How tough is it for players to focus on the game with such a busy week leading up to the Super Bowl? You know, Terry, that's, that's a great question because just last night they had media day, and that's really their time to kind of lay back and just stay relaxed but uh, and deal with folks like me in the media. But when you look at their schedule, I mean, it is a lot in one short week with such a huge game at the end of the week. I mean, today they met with the media for about an hour and a half. They'll continue to practice this week here in Atlanta. Not only that, they've got family members here as well. But one thing is interesting here, what they do with all the teams, is that they, on Saturday, they leave the hotel that they're currently staying in today, and they get away. And so no family members, no one can be involved with them. They're focused just on the game, and then they get set for the game on Sunday. Very nice. Uh, Anthony, it looks like you drew the tough assignment. Uh, enjoy uh, everything that you've got going on down there, and uh, we look forward to your continued coverage through the week.
uh, enjoy the rest of the festivities. All right, okay. and coming up on First Okay, and Derek, five, thank you very much. Ligonier is mourning the loss of a police officer and his wife. We spoke with the city's police chief about the life the officer led. Local coverage you can count on continues with Tara Brantley and Dirk Rowley. You're watching Wayne 15 News, first at five. The Ligonier community is mourning the loss of a young couple after a crash last night. Just 22 and 21 years old, the young couple left behind many people who deeply care about them. Wayne 15's Rachel Russell talked to a family member to see how the two are being remembered. Dirk and Tara, Ethan and Shauna Kaiser were traveling in Ligonier near Cromwell last night when they lost control of their vehicle driving into oncoming traffic. Both were pronounced dead at the scene. Today, I talked to the Ligonier police chief, who is also a family member of the two, to find out how these two newlyweds will be remembered. They both are really shining stars of their professions. Ethan working part-time as a police officer for the police department in Ligonier for just over a year. You know that you're called for it and uh, we knew that right away with Ethan. He kind of joined the family here. Just has done a phenomenal job. Just a very caring person. And Shauna studying to be a teacher. And Shauna kind of had this smile giggle to her that she always had that unfortunately um, kids won't get to experience. All in all, service before self is is best best said of those two. The couple had been married for five months. They started dating in middle school and uh, were married this last August and uh, no children but they had uh, a dog Ivory who was their child for sure. Reporting from Ligonier, Rachel Russell, Wayne 15 News. Rachel, thanks. So of course our big story today, the weather. Mm, yes, and it's only getting colder and colder. Stay tuned in the 10 day forecast. I have the latest numbers for you. Local coverage you can count on continues with Chief Meteorologist Nicholas Ferrari's Live Doppler 15 Fury forecast. Well, looks will be deceiving over the next 24 hours. Tomorrow, you'll look out your window during the day and you'll say, wow, this is a beautiful day. Lots of bright sunshine. But remember, the big Arctic chill, our next winter blast is still on the way. No changes there. Take a look from our area weather cameras now. This is Parkview Field can see some clouds overhead, but some moments of bright blue sky today. We'll switch over to our St. Joseph Hospital camera, the time-lapse view there. You also see some clouds in the sky. Well, they could produce a few snowflakes here tonight as the cold air roars in. Five degrees now in Angola and Kendallville, Columbia City, you're at six. We're still in the double digits in Fort Wayne, where it's 10. Decatur, you're at 11, and it's 11 in Van Wert, too. In Hartford City, your temperature 14. But of course, it's not just the temperatures that are the only part of the story. It is the wind chills as well. And this is what it feels like outside. It feels like 11 below in Fort Wayne, 15 below in Angola, 11 below in Huntington. Our wind speeds pick up overnight. Our maximum speeds won't be reached until tomorrow morning when we could have wind gusts up to around 40 miles per hour. And this is what it will mean as far as wind chill numbers go. This is our wind chill model. We'll start it at 7 o'clock with wind chills in the teens below zero across the region by morning, say 9 in the morning. That's when we'll see our lowest wind chill values of the upcoming days. We could be anywhere from 40 below to 50 below across northeast Indiana and northwest Ohio. Truly dangerous cold around here. By the time we get to the afternoon, at best, it's only going to feel like between minus 30 and minus 40. And then we move into our Thursday still with well below zero wind chills Thursday morning, somewhere in minus 30 to minus 40 territory then. And then during the day on Thursday, temperatures slowly rise. Wind chills get slightly better, but you can see still below zero throughout the day on Thursday. Right now on Storm Tracker, there's not much precipitation to monitor, just a few scattered snow flurries across the region that will lead to just maybe a light coating of snow in some select spots. Overnight, we're going to watch those temperatures really plummet with a few scattered clouds in the sky. By the time we get to the morning, remember temperatures at that point will be well below zero, bottoming out at 17 below. That is the actual air temperature, those wind chills to 50 below zero. Remember those strong southwesterly gusts. During the day tomorrow, some sunshine, a few passing clouds, but that sun certainly will not warm us up much at all. We stay below zero all day long. These are actual temperatures tomorrow. You can time them out hour by hour. There we are at 9 in the morning, 17 below. During the course of the morning, at lunchtime, 15 below. By the time we get to the afternoon, 
nine below there at five and six in the evening, 24 hours from now. In the 10 day forecast on Thursday, we will reach a high of four, but that's not going to happen until later at night. So most of the day on Thursday will be spent with air temperatures below zero. On Friday, we get a boost to 22, then temperatures keep rising over the weekend. Saturday, 35, Sunday, 48, some rain there, Monday, 55 degrees. So just as incredible as it is to be so far below zero here tonight, it is incredible to be in the mid 50s there early next week. Wow. You're talking about 100 degrees. Yeah, in terms of what it's going to right. feel like outside. That's, it's crazy. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. okay, for sure. Nicholas, yeah. thank you. Coming up on Wayne 15. One player does not a team make. This squad's looking for their first sectional title in almost 20 years. We introduce you to the team of the week coming up at 6. But first, if rates keep rising, bonds will likely continue to underperform. Greg Reynolds has some tips on how to let rates rise without wrecking your bond portfolio next on the Two Minute Money Plan. This week on the Two Minute Money Plan, we're talking about how to let rates rise without wrecking your bond portfolio. Greg Reynolds of Reynolds Wealth Management is our financial expert, joins us every Tuesday on First to Five. Greg, always good to see you. If we expect rates to keep rising, why not abandon bonds just altogether? Uh, very good question. Lots of people just structurally can't do that in their portfolio, Pat. Uh, first, there are a lot of folks that just from a construction theory uh, need those bonds to offset some of the volatility and so forth that may be caused by equities, alternatives, other portions of the portfolio. But second and most important, most folks that own bonds need the income that they're producing. Um, so they're doing a job in the portfolio and it's often not possible to abandon them exclusively uh, or entirely entirely across a portfolio or, or a customer segment. This is something you could say, uh, you say it can be a blessing and a curse at the same time. How so? Absolutely. So, so the blessing of it is, is that those higher rates often lead to higher yields. So those folks that need that income from those bonds uh, may be able to get uh, higher and higher paychecks uh, as those yields go up. The curse side of it is, is of course, higher interest rates uh, generally equates to lower bond prices for existing bonds that have been issued. Now you have a couple of tips that can really help out. Absolutely. So for those folks that need to own bonds in their portfolio or currently do, uh, a couple things to consider. First, uh, hold those bonds to maturity. So if you can own individual high quality bonds and you own them to maturity, the price fluctuation might be messy on your statement, but eventually you'll get all of your principal plus your interest back. Um, so you can have a little peace of mind there. Second, uh, for those folks that may need to sell those bonds early or may need some liquidity in the portfolio, uh, keep your duration really, really short. The shorter the duration, the less price volatility you'll have. Um, so it'll be a little smoother trip for you and you won't see as large of swings. Uh, top to bottom in, in the range of pricing. Important information to know as always. Greg, thanks for that. For more information about making sound financial decisions, you can contact Greg Reynolds at Reynolds Wealth Management. Next Tuesday on First at Five, we'll tackle another topic on the Two Minute Money Plan. And be sure to join me tomorrow morning along with Alyssa, Greg, and Michael on First News between 5 and 7 a.m. We'll be right back. All right, at the top of the show, we talked about the uniqueness of a below zero high temperature. Now I want to focus on low temperatures because a lot of people remember the winter of 2013 2014 and here's a stat for comparison the lowest temperature we had back that winter was 16 below tomorrow morning we'll drop to 17 below and remember those wind chills down to around 50 below a very cold morning around here and you know what thursday morning isn't that much better 14 below will be the low temperature at that point tomorrow our high temperature only nine below thursday four that's gonna happen late at the day really at nighttime Friday 22 over the weekend, whoa, there's some really warm air. So if you don't have to go out, don't. Right? That's a good tip. See you at 6.